All right, I'm gonna apologize for the wind up front uh, because I, I'm unexpectedly blowing pretty good here. But uh, anyway, spent uh, the better part of last evening getting this uh, Bronco Raptor completely packed up and ready to go. Now that's better, get out of the wind a little bit. Anyway, got it all packed up and ready to go and uh, we are going to, to see how far we can get tonight. Uh, we are heading in the direction of Sedona. We are a long ways. Um, I am packed to the gills. Uh, plan on maybe running uh, Broken Arrow, uh, a couple of other of the uh, the good trails that are there, and uh, spend a few days in Sedona, uh, making our way to Mount Potosi for the Bronco Raptor off rodeo. And uh, so, yeah, we're super excited. Uh, gonna get on the road here in just a second. Uh, about three to four hours behind my planned departure time, but uh, you know that's it. So. Real quick, I just want to show just how much stuff you can actually fit in one of these six Jim Broncos. All right, side note, we're going old school, so I'm uh, using the uh, the Yeti. Uh, basically, well, you can see how full it is, so that was going to eliminate the ability to plug in on the 12-volt socket with my Dometic fridge. Uh, but as a side note, I tested all this prior to because I didn't want to have food spoilage issues or anything like that. That port does not put out enough juice to even kick the compressor on on the Dometic fridge. So <laughs> it would have been problematic for sure. Uh, but anyway, I have uh, two full-size sleeping bags, um, some various other things here. Big thing is it takes up all the room is the T4 Hub Gazelle, which um, have to lay the seat down. Um, underneath there, I have two small cub boxes from Front Runner. We basically tried to get every square inch of space. Battery power pack, camera gear. I've got camera gear stashed everywhere. As you can see what I've got going on here. Uh, before we do any hitting the trails and things, I'm gonna readjust this and I will strap this down to try to keep it from moving. I've got a little bit of room behind the seat here. I still have one chair I need to put in here. As I said, we've utilized, I've got stuff underneath this seat. I have a uh, burner under the other seat. I have installed the spare tire trash container. I have two gallons of water in here. Check this out. Get the little toilet situation, trash can makes it nice and easy to store and keep it shape and everything else but, uh, all right you ready are you excited you ready to camp yes okay all right say we're off Bubble. say we're off uh. all right all right uh first fuel stop uh been getting pretty good at gas mileage probably somewhere around the uh, 17 and a little but uh, it's kind of hard to tell anyway we are in uh, Cherokee Oklahoma uh, stop at this really cool little gas station here and uh, probably looking to be about another three hours away from Amarillo absolutely love this thing on a road trip so smooth you get in that right hand lane and it's just beating the crap out of the tires and you uh, just like you're on like an old, old Cadillac or something. Anyway, uh, really impressed with it. Super easy to uh, to just get in and then roll out at about 80, 85 miles an hour. And that's a good choice in bringing this, even if it is just a little bit crowded here. So, <laughs> man, it's been a long haul here. It's about uh, 1.30, feels like 2.30 because we've lost an hour. Uh, we pulled over at this little Best Western here in where are we at Albuquerque so we're gonna try to get a few hours of sleep here and uh, get back on the road in the morning and should be able to get to Sedona if we do it this way probably around lunchtime so oh my goodness <laughs> hey, are you tired are you tired Ah, wasn't bad at all. Yeah. All right, 
Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, day two of this epic adventure here. Uh, we uh, <laughs> last night we were going to stay in uh, Albuquerque, and uh, anyway, uh, typical thing there. A lot of a uh, lot of riffraff just walking the streets and whatnot. And for 180 bucks and a vehicle full of camera gear, camping equipment, and stuff like that, I just was like, I'm not spending that much money to potentially get uh, some smash and grab done. Uh, drove another hour down the road, which is kind of cool because uh, um, it just puts us a little bit closer. You know, less driving today, uh, but uh, we ended up, we are at a uh, Best Western right off of Interstate 40 in Grants, New Mexico. Rooms have white microwave. Um, it's just, it's as, as plain as it can get. It's probably their answer to like a Motel 6 or something like that. Uh, we're gonna get loaded up here in a minute and be on our way. We're going today from Grants to Sedona, and uh, when we get to Sedona, we'll check it out. But uh, if we see any interesting sites along the way, obviously we'll bring you in on it. Grants, New Mexico is 78 miles west of Albuquerque. Population is around 10,000, and is a nice little town that sits along the Trails of the Ancients Byway and Route 66. You ready to get some breakfast? 1912 Market. All right, here we go. Come on. In search of breakfast, we were led to the 1912 Market. This place is kind of cool. So we were able to get uh, our breakfast taken care of, get a little bit of coffee, and what? check out the inside of this old historic milk? building. Can you open my truck and milk tree? You need help opening that? Stop here on the corner of Winslow, Arizona, and get a little uh, little shot of that uh, just to be a goofy tourist. Be arriving in Sedona in a couple of hours. Wow. The drive into Sedona is absolutely breathtaking. Once uh, we made it into town, though, it was straight to the Safeway, get a few groceries, hit the city park for a late lunch, and on to Schnebley Hill Road. Made it to Sedona. There is... Uh, Tons of traffic here, obviously. It's a very beautiful place. I mean, look at this, it's crazy. <laughs> so you come into town, it's like the like the more historic, real tight part of uh, Sedona. And uh, I'm thinking, man, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start to panic because it's really tight and whatnot. So I'm like, I gotta get some gas. So I stopped at a, uh, at a Gulf or a 76 station, whatever, and I pulled in there and I didn't even pay any attention put the credit card in, start pumping gas. I'm like, oh my God, man, it's gotta be, it's the fastest pump ever. And then realized I was paying $5 and 40 cents for some ethanol free gasoline. And uh, I was like, oh my gosh. But uh, if you drive on down into actual town, things are a little bit pricey, uh, but uh, you will find much cheaper gasoline and uh, the roads are pretty wide open. Got some free parking areas and things like that, but uh, got some, uh, uh, things for dinner to make at the uh, Safeway. And uh, now we're gonna make our way to uh, Schnibley Hill Road. And uh, we're going to uh, to hit that. I've been reading a little bit about it. It's kind of like a rough, uh, it may not be much fun, but uh, we're looking for a uh, camping spot for the evening. So that's, uh, that's the main goal. Check you out when we get there and uh, hopefully we can find us a pretty decent spot to camp. Uh, we've got a big day tomorrow. We're gonna try to run Broken Arrow and uh, Soldier soldier Pass or Soldier Hill Road, Soldier Pass. Um, and uh, I'm gonna do one more maybe if we have time, but uh, 
figure that out when we get over in that area tomorrow. I made a little mistake when I was uh, looking at the map um, on on X, and uh, when I routed to it, I actually um, routed to the uh, the, the high point uh, to Schnebley Hill Road, which is the uh, um, in the National Forest. It's a real smooth road um, where all the camping spots are at. And the actual trail portion is uh, going to be at the low point, which is actually in Sedona in the middle of town, in which you drive up, make a turn around, and then go back down. Um, and it was, it was cool either way, but uh, we were ready to set up camp, so it all worked out. Absolutely amazing. All right, we've, uh, I think we're running this trail actually from the uh, going towards Sedona, not uh, coming from Sedona. So I think we started in on the higher elevation. And what we plan to do now is uh, work this back down or back up rather. And we'll get back up in the back further up at elevation. And uh, it's a little bit cooler. And we have plenty of shade. What do you think? Yeah. Huh? Mm. Alright, getting ready to make a little bit of a uh, taco here. Are you ready to do kind of five going? Got the heat going. Got camp set up. And Schnebly Hill Road. If you top that in and you get routed to it, be careful. It's going to take you from Sedona all the way around to the back side of it. And you're going to do the non-fun section first. And we almost bailed on it. Um, but uh, we're going to hit it really early in the morning back into town before we do... Uh, Soldier's Pass. Soldier's Pass. Yep. All right, let's get these tacos. I think I added too much uh, pepper. Yeah. Get a good smoke to it. Miss Holy Garlic. Hey, a ton of just regular. Hey, can some mango I talk salsa. to the phone? What do you want to say? That I don't like breakfast and you, I don't like it. It's disgusting to me. To you, okay. And I don't like it. Put it on. taco creation from the night before was amazing um, slept really really well um, but uh, of course I'm up three hours before everybody else so I get to take in the scenery have a little coffee and sort out the day about this morning uh yesterday we turned around at the overlook on Schnebley hill so we're gonna now do the fun part which is the uh, downhill point from the uh, big overlook we're six six uh six miles or so as a crow flies directly to soldier pass so we're uh, we're heading there now and uh we'll uh film anything that might be of value on this uh trail there's some really good views though In point two miles, turn left to National Forest 
those views. Look at that. My goodness. I'll take your all the road, though, whatever you do. trail is extremely scenic it'll just wear you out though just the sheer amount of just just back and forth back and forth it's like one long little boulder field and uh it's just it's tiresome after a little bit but uh not exactly sure how much longer we've got a few little obstacles here and there but i mean this is definitely a uh just a high clearance four-wheel drive type of trail all right just when you think that uh you're not gonna ever get off these uh boulders and all that stuff it's like uh, then the town of Sedona comes back into view and uh, we don't have that much longer left on this trail yeah. it's just a bunch of that it's like you cannot go more than probably five to six miles an hour I mean you could go faster but I mean you'd be a hazard to everybody though. all right so we just went through the lock gate there uh, you've that access controlled we got down to this point i never saw another gate but apparently i thought that was the first gate that's the second gate uh anyway here we are we're getting on soldier pass and yeah we're on soldier pass right now soldier pass right now and so here we go and here's the uh the, and I'm a good shoulder. I'm <laughs> here's the second gate here so it's access controlled and now we got to open this one and go through it oh it's a combination as well so we'll have to put that same code in Soon we had made our way to the Devil's Kitchen sinkhole. This is just, you, you've just got to see it. It's really cool. It's a large, large sinkhole. You can get out, kind of like walk around. They have a little interpretive area that just explains the geology of a sinkhole. And it is extremely hot, so we're going to make our way back to the vehicle and on down the trail.
Next up is the Seven Sacred Pools. This time of year, they are empty, but uh, if it's in the rainy season, uh, this is probably a pretty good show. Um, a little boy thinks that they are Bigfoot holes, which they, maybe they are. Back to this sandy bottom part here. Hey, you have fun today? No. Oh my gosh. Go the last trail that we have time to run is Broken Arrow. Broken Arrow is rated a double black diamond. It is also located in a residential neighborhood, so be respectful and watch your noise and your speed going through there. But uh, soon enough, you end up at the trailhead. We uh, were already aired down, so we didn't have to do that. And on to the trail. The first real obstacle is basically the gatekeeper. If you have proper clearance, uh, you should be fine here. Um, there is a ton of traction and it can sort of get up onto this higher level. And then there's some optional lines you can play around with, but uh, it's immediately, you just start to see all the formations and the rocks and everything. And it is a beautiful trail. Broken Arrow and you get on past the, uh, what I, would, I guess is like the gatekeeper, the, the ledge coming in. Um, this, uh, there's a little spur and this is a chicken, uh, chicken point or chicken something. I'm not exactly sure, but anyway, uh, it's just a little spur, but it's pretty cool. You catch, catch these cliffs from all angles here. Absolutely amazing.
And this cool formation is called Merry-Go-Round Rock. Just finished with Broken Arrow Trail. It's getting a little congested once the sun was getting down a little low in the sky. Temperatures are uh, more reasonable uh, later in the evening. Um, a lot of the uh, pink Jeep tours, but uh, just go slow and there's so many places to like pull over. Um, it's no issue whatsoever. Um, it's a fun trail, really. It didn't take long, but uh, not really challenging in any way. Um, there's that one optional thing. I think we did everything that we could do. I got confused at one point. There was a little spur that went before you get to merry-go-round. So I don't know. I don't know if that had any kind of a, an obstacle to it or, or not. But uh, it seems like I remember ever, but there's a lot of people uh, maybe that did something that was really super steep and it was a big drop. I didn't find that. Um, not not saying I didn't, but it didn't appear to be uh, what I saw on video. So who knows? Anyway, airing up and uh, gonna go try to find one of these creeks that uh, everybody raves about here to get some of this dirt off. And uh, we're on to the Bronco off rodeo in two days. So the countdown is on for that Raptor experience. Thanks for watching our video. And remember, if you are new here and you like what you see, please leave us a comment, give us a like, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel.